Jesus came to save the lost. And the lost are made up of men, women, boys, and girls. Perhaps you have heard of the Elizabeth Elliots and Mother Teresa's of recent times. But Jesus had some women in his time that followed the ministry closely and, and, and made many contributions to the ministry. In Luke 8, 1 through 3, we read, Soon afterward, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chuzza, Herod's household manager, and Susanna and, and many others who provided for them out of their means. So uh, some women like Mary Magdalene did frequently uh, accompany Jesus and the disciples. And our focus will be on Mary Magdalene. Uh, she's mentioned 14 times in the Gospels. And from references to her, uh, we can see clearly what she did and how she did it. Something that stands out in eight of the 14 passages is that Mary is named in connection with other women. But she always has list. This fact alone seats her in a distinguished place when it comes to women in Christ's service. In the five times when, where she is mentioned alone, the connection is with the death and resurrection of Christ. In passages like Mark 16, 9, John 20, uh, verses 1, 11, 16, and 18. In one instance, her, her name comes after that of the mother and the aunt of Jesus. She stood close by the cross with these women, but because of their relation to Jesus, it would not have been fitting to put her name before theirs. No other woman superseded Mary in her utter devotion to the Master. Jesus rescued her from the grip of Satan. While some bad traditions teach that she was a prostitute, that is not biblical. That's a bad tradition. Uh, we're told right here in this passage that Jesus cast out seven demons from her. So it's no wonder that Mary loved Jesus so much. Like all who have experienced his grace, she knew where she would be had it not been for her encounter with Jesus she wasn't a taker. You know, a lot of people only look to God for what they can get, you know? Uh, gimme, gimme, gimme. Saved by God's grace, her natural reaction was to show gratitude to Jesus by helping out in his ministry in any way that she could. Later on in the New Testament, as the gospel begins to spread, we, we saw where another woman helped the Apostle Paul in ministry. Now, Paul interrupted a, a prayer meeting by a river one time, and he, and he led Lydia to Christ. And this successful businesswoman helped finance much of his ministry. Mary and the other women showed that gratitude should matter as they helped provide for the mission team. Gratitude for what God has done for us should be followed by giving of ourselves. That is our time, our talent, and our treasure. From the writings of Scripture, we see that many women have done just that. In our churches today, we often see more women doing more than men in the ministry. <clears throat> now, that being said, Jesus would not have been bothered by whatever she or anyone else used to be. You see, Jesus doesn't care about your past, or your many mistakes. In fact, he came on a rescue mission. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He has come to bring life, and Mary appreciated this so much that she stayed loyal to the end. At the crucifixion of Jesus, the disciples had fled for safety, but we see the loyal bystanders standing and watching just a short distance away. As we read in Matthew 27, 55 and 56, there are also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were 
Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. And we see that Mary leads the way. Mary went with her Lord into the shadows and is thus represented as being among those who followed Jesus on his cruel journey towards the cross as they traveled from Galilee to Jerusalem. And as they followed, they still ministered to him. Mary was present with the, with the other holy women at the mock trial of Jesus. No, no longer is he on the road with crowds gathering and, and hanging on his words, fearless in his declaration and public condemnation, condemnations. He, he's arrested and tried for his life. Some of his closest friends had deserted him, but Mary and her group did not abandon him. No sooner had Jesus said, it is finished, while on the cross dismissing his spirit, than the question arose among the Marys at the cross, how could they secure that blood-stained body and prepare it for burial? Thankfully, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus showed up for that very purpose. The artist Rubens, in his masterpiece, The Descent of the Cross, represents Mary Magdalene and Mary, the wife of Cleophas, assisting Joseph and Nicodemus in receiving the battered body from the tree, preparing it for the burial, then placing the remains in the new tomb in the garden. Mary Magdalene remained sitting over against the sepulcher and beholding until Joseph had laid the Lord's body away. Matthew 27, 57 to 61, we pick up. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped in a clean linen shroud, and he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb, and he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. Mary was so endeared to Jesus for what he had done for her. She's last at the cross. She followed closely to know where he was buried. So it should be no surprise that she is first to discover the empty tomb. And it was in the area of the garden tomb that she hears her name called. In John 20, 11 through 16, we read, But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I'll take him away. In verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. He called her by name. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus calls his genuine followers by name. At the resurrection of Jesus, we see her great loyalty. She was still hanging around. She loved her Jesus. He knew her by name. God the Father blessed Mary's loyalty. The first person to herald the resurrection of Jesus Christ was Mary Magdalene. Now it wasn't Peter, or James, or John, but, but Mary. Mary didn't let Jesus get far out of her sight. Even after he died, following Jesus along 
a long walk. And, and there are twists and turns that test our faithfulness. There are good times and challenging times, highs and lows. And a lot of people get knocked down and they get back up. Some spring right back up. Some are, some are slow to gather themselves, but, but God must really smile at those that stick with them through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mary was faithful to the end. We learn from her to never give up on Jesus. She's a magnificent example of loyalty to King Jesus. Loyalty. That's what's missing. Some are loyalty, some are loyal to a cause, but how many are really loyal to a person, to the person of Jesus? Maybe this would be a good time to reflect on where Jesus found us and, and what he's done for us. Now, where, would, where would I be without him? Would Jesus call you loyal? <laughs>